is the way this system works is you have to be able to push this up and you want it to come out of the top right here. If it doesn't come out, you can't get the C-clip. <laughs> What's up YouTube? Today we're gonna to bring you the Goat Guns MCX and we're gonna take it down completely. Now obviously it doesn't come in this box when you buy it, maybe one day. But for now, they come in the normal Goat Guns packaging and they come partially disassembled into all of these different parts. Your little uh, Romeo folding stock mag, giant suppressor, four end. So what we're gonna be doing is breaking this guy down all the way down to the individual parts. The only reason you would need to do this, of course, is if you're going to try and paint it or if you like to try and customize things. So there's a couple of tips and tricks. The majority of the MCX is actually fairly simple. They get a really good job of just giving you a few screws to take the main body apart. What we're gonna talk about really is um, again, we're gonna be removing the mag release because people seem to get stuck on that. It's pretty simple, but you have to be careful not to send this piece flying. And then we're gonna focus on taking apart the folder. Now, it's not necessary to take apart the folder unless you plan on painting it. In my case, if I'm gonna paint it, I have to paint each piece individually. I don't want to just spray the whole thing and spray the hinge and all that because that just doesn't look professional and that's not what I'm going to produce. If you're at home and you just want to paint, you may find that if you, as long as you fold the folder out, you can still get in there and spray it and it'll be, uh, it'll be totally doable for whatever you're wanting to do. But if you want to go all the way, I'm going to show you a couple of tips and tricks and we'll take this thing apart. When you get MCX, it comes like this, all your different parts ready to assemble, which is part of what makes these things so fun is you get to build them out. It's cool because you can paint this piece and your suppressor and all these different parts and you can already get a, a pretty cool look just by simply painting the parts that come up, come with it. Um, for me, I'm gonna put this in a blast cabin. I'm gonna take it down to bare metal and get it ready for paint. For the average person, you can use um, a brown scuff bright. Um, you can use sandpaper. I mean, realistically, you could even use one of these and you can scuff this guy down pretty well. It's a little bit of work, but the reality is, is these have a pretty solid coating on them. Definitely better than some of the previous. And most of them are even a good bit smoother. You really only need to get a good texture on it so that when you lay your paint down, it'll stick. And if you do that, you also won't really need a primer because this becomes your primer. So it just depends on how you want to go about it. For me, a lot of it has to do with tolerances and to ensure that it's as smooth as a paint as possible. I put it in a blast cabinet. So this one's easy. That part's separate. This part you can paint or not. It's whatever. I don't usually actually paint those. Um, so we'll start with the scope and the scope is only a couple of parts to worry about, but you need to make sure that you don't lose the lenses. So you have one screw, it's pretty tight. So you wanna be careful not to strip it. And what I found is if you pop these guys out just a little bit, it will make it easier to separate. Just carefully separate it. And you're gonna see you have your little lenses in here. So you want those pulled out. You're gonna pull out either each one of your optic ends right here. And then you have this last disc and it looks like it's probably welded in or something, but it's not, it's actually just pressed in. So very simple little pop, pops that right out. And there you go. So then you can paint that and give it a different color. And this rod is pressed in as well. So I just use my soft end hammer and pop it out as well. And there you go. And that is the entire site assembly. And it has, of course, it just depends on how you're gonna paint it, but I paint these lenses often because it adds a little color 
I have to paint that. Right now, I'm just dropping all these small parts in a baggie so I don't lose them. And when I'm ready, I'll separate these out to the parts I'm going to paint and then the parts that I don't. I highly encourage you because there's so many variants on screws that you separate out pieces that you want for this in a bag and the pieces that you want for this in a bag and so on. It'll make it a whole lot easier for you to keep up with. So there you go. That's your body for that. Nice and simple. We'll set that aside. Oh, this thing right here was one of the hardest ones to figure out how to do it without breaking it. Now, it comes with this really cool rubber butt pad. However, they used an adhesive to try and keep the butt pad in place, but it doesn't work. So you end up with this glue dried on here. So all I do is I clean that a little bit because I want to make sure there isn't any residue that's going to mess up my paint. And then I'll go in and I'll blast it and it paints just fine. And you got your little rubber butt pad, which I just reapply after the fact. It's a little loosey goosey because it's so soft, but there's really nothing you can do about it. Um, but it looks fine, plays fine. This is where the challenging piece comes in. So I built a jig, super simple. It is one nail. Um, I just found a good, like thick finishing nail. And the reason is, is the way this system works is you have to be able to push this up and you want it to come out of the top right here. If it doesn't come out, you can't get the C-clip off. Now, this is where some extra challenge comes in because that C-clip is uh, quite small. So let me see if I can give you a good angle of what this looks like. So we're going to be pushing this in right here. And it's gonna push that C-clip out right there. And then we're gonna to have to get in there with a pair of needle nose and push it off because as far as I know, you don't really make a C-clip remover small enough. So what I do is I get on the inside edges of this clip and I just push it off like that. I just open them up just a hair and I push it out. And there's your clip. And then this guy comes apart. And now you've got two pieces. Get your spring and your rod right here. And that little tiny C-clip. Don't lose that. Because if you do, this part won't ever work again. And as much as I'd like to give you some cool ways of making that not work, you could possibly use some heavy wire. I don't know that it would ever stay there. So my C-clip goes in the bag. And that's how it goes together. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to put this part back together. The rest of it's easy. Reassembly is the reverse of assembly, no big deal. This is a little bit more challenging. All right, so you have your small end and your fat end. Because your spring is gonna go back on there and you'll see there's a tiny, tiny little cutout on there. You can sort of see it with that brown background right there. That's where your clip's gonna be going. So we're gonna get this on. Go ahead and lock it in place where you want it. If you had an extra set of hands or fingers, this would be easier. Okay, we're gonna get it up in there. Now for me, I'm lefty, so I'm gonna be using the left side we're going to do it just like that. C-clip is super small. So I'm going to get it as tight as I can. Right there, see? I need to be able to get it onto the bar. I'm going to use my little nail and get it lined up. And we're going to push it through. <clears throat> now I'm pushing from this side because this has the slope on it right here. And I need to be able to get into it on this side. So I find a little slot, which is really difficult, so bear with me. If you decide to try this, I'd love to know how it goes for you. It takes a few tries. Sometimes I'll get it right on, sometimes not so much. Gotta get it right on the edge, and we're gonna try again. 
Gotta find the notch. Bear with me. All right, once you have it in place, you're gonna clamp it, bam. Okay, Whew, two hours later. That's it, now you're back into action. So that little C-clip, as you can see, definitely the most technically challenging, but you can do it. So I'll come back to that. I'll take that back apart when I'm ready because I will be painting this one that I'm disassembling. Let's talk about the body. For the most part, body's pretty straightforward. It has these little tiny screws that are Allen head screws. And these are the ones that come with, uh, rather it comes with a little tiny screwdriver, which is awesome. Um, the bit that I'm using is a 1.3. Uh, however, I think if I had a 1.4, it might be better, but I don't have one and I have yet to be able to find one. I ordered another micro set and it also only came with a 1.3 and not a 1.4. So if you can find a 1.4, I'd be curious to know if it fits better. This works, but um, if you're not really careful, you can strip it. So, all right, so carefully pull it out. Again, you have another spring in there for your charging handle. Charging handle comes out right here. This is your um, ejecting mechanism right here. So right there, that's what actually pulls the rounds out, grabs the back of the round and flips it out. Um, so I don't take this apart. You can, it's not super hard. Uh, in this case, it's held in by a spring and a pin and that pin is held in, captured right there. It comes all the way through and that's what holds this mechanism in place. So if you remove it, when you go to put it back together, you just have to press this in, hold the spring in place, put this screw into the top, and twist it in, and it'll lock everything back in for you. I've yet to find a reason to do that. I'm not planning on painting these. The way that it slides in, it doesn't have an attractive surface for me to polish or anything like that. So, so far, I haven't really decided I wanted to do that because the actual spring piece right here is what you're actually seeing in the channel. And, um, you yeah, know, you could paint it, you could do a, do it gold or silver, make it look cool or whatever, but I just, I don't like the surface of it painted through. So I just leave it black. All right. So pretty straightforward. You have your dust cover, has a little flip up pen, basically the same as the real one. So I'm slide that bad boy out. Keep the spring springs right there. The uh, piece that attaches to the magnet is just a screw. So I would encourage you to remove that screw before you paint so that it still has good adhesion to the magnet when you close your door. You wanna make sure that it sticks. And if you paint it, if it's too thick especially, it may not stick very well. So up to you, whatever you decide to do there. All right, so this piece only has the barrel. The barrel is super short and super simple to remove. Two screws. should have some like fun music playing in the background or something because I mean, how long can you listen to my voice and there you go there's the barrel again paint it don't paint it whatever you decide just remember that it fits inside there it has a little tolerance but it is it is snug so if you use spray paint it could get pretty tight for you um, you could also tape this part off and paint the rest of it so that when you do slide it back in it fits nicely fits nicely sorry um, just make sure that you don't go too thick because reassembling does make it a little challenging, but now that's done. Now we are on to the lower. Let me bag some stuff up. These little bags, uh, I order them because I use so many, but, um, like little snack bags, little half bags, those things work really great. Uh, if you're wanting to bag up all your parts, even at the dollar store, they have a whole box of little, the little tiny snack bags and they're um, perfect for this. So stock is super easy. It's just got a screw in the bottom. You unscrew it. It's only a few threads on this guy. Actually pull that guy off. There's your screw. Then you have your safety select. It is a little bit different than the AR and the fact that it's a two piece. 
and it's got an ambi on it, which is great. Just pull that off, don't lose your screw. The other side pops right out. Now for me, when I paint this particular one, I actually paint it while it's together and use my alligator clips to hold it. So I just literally hold it right in the middle and then I put it, I can blast it and um, hold it with the alligator clips and paint it, it works really well. So that's it, nice and simple, really small. Um, and the last couple pieces, this guy right here for your uh, bolt catch pops right out. We've got the uh, trigger mechanism, super simple, very similar to the AR setup. And everything just comes out as two pieces. Again, it just sits down in the channel like that. And then put this guy in like that. If it doesn't sit flush for you, that's okay. It will usually rock right back up in there in place. Now, something that I found on these, the way that the uh, die cast is made, a lot of times when you reassemble it, that trigger doesn't want to pull. It usually just gets hung up, and if you get a little, a little bit of pressure, don't get crazy, but a little bit of pressure, it'll pop it loose, and it'll usually work. As long as it's in there straight and flat like that, you're good to go. Anyway, let's get that out. I always put this screw back in place because, you know, there's enough screws to keep up with, and this one is fine when I blast it and repaint it. It just gets painted, which is fine. And I do the same thing with the grip screw. And these, quite honestly, these screws are different than the rest of the screws on it, so I just make sure that they're in the place. So this one is a recess type screw. This is a flat screw, so they're very different. And for whatever reason, even like the threading and stuff is different on this guy, so just gotta be careful, make sure you don't get your screws all mixed up and then it's just a hassle putting them back together. Okay, last piece. This is basically the same exact setup as the AR. And as we talked about before, this is a pressure fitting. So it's literally pressed in, comes right out this side. And there's a spring down in the middle that you actually can't see because this part of the body is solid. Okay, so we're going to put pressure right on there. Make sure that there's a gap. In this case, you can see this channel right here. I'm gonna push it through. There you go, that's it. That's gonna come off. Sometimes it'll go flying, so please be careful. I already sent one flying off into my garage and lost it. Um, thank goodness I have some spares. And there's your little spring, you take your spring out and bam. Now when you're painting this, you can assemble, just make sure you got the right side out because one side is knurled. Put this guy on, a little bit of pressure. You could, you could paint it like that, but for me, I actually, um, I use these things which are amazing. Just regular old dowels and they hold all my parts like this. This is like the easiest way to paint um, and then for parts that don't have holes in them and this alligator stand these clips are amazing I clip my parts like that boom when I put these in the blast cabinet I literally take all of these little parts and I put them in a little cup and uh, the cup has a lid on it and I sh stick my blast nozzle down in there and I blast them because all I need to do is just flatten the surface on everything and it paints beautifully. Um, on these guys, they're big enough to where I can actually hold on to them with my big old gloves and you blast all that media off. Same thing here. Um, but that's pretty straightforward. The last part before you paint is to remove this rear pick rail. It's super easy, just a couple of screws and you pop it off like that. Now, an interesting thing to note the spring that comes with the charging handle actually will insert through this hole for you so if you do this and you get the whole thing put together your charging handles in here like this you have it all together you can put your spring straight in like this once it's all together and then go in and actually insert this 
pull it down, put your screws in and your spring is in place. And now that works. Um, that's actually one of the, one of the easier ways. So it just depends on how you do it. Whereas you can also put all this together, put your two screws in here, rotate this up, drop your spring in, and then just close it together like this. Now, by, mind you, I don't have any screws on here, so I'm having the whole thing together. But you see how it just pops right out? So as long as you have this plate on the back, you're good to go. All right, I hope this was helpful. These are all your parts. Um, I'm not doing a paint project for this one because right now I have 25 of them to do, so I don't have a lot of time to go through and do the whole paint process. But you guys have seen me do paint work before. Um, I may end up showing a completed model at the end of this video we'll see where i land on time but we have all the individual pieces and parts have fun paint it be creative come back and look at some videos that i might have for you to get some tips and tricks on on uh, paint uh, if you use airbrush that's in my opinion the best way to go because you're going to get the thinnest coat if you use spray paint light thin coats i cannot stress enough light thin coats Light thin coats will ensure that you see all of your detail. They'll also ensure that it dries harder so that it doesn't scratch off as easily. So as long as you prep your surface really well, remember we talked about scuffing this, the brown scuff pads at Home Depot are the way to go because you do not have to take all this paint off. Guys, don't get locked into thinking you gotta take it down to bare metal. You do not have to do that. As long as it's got a good scuff on it and it's smooth, you are set. Then, if you're painting with like automotive spray paint, the little spray cans, those things are amazing because your paint comes out really thin. You can, once it's dried, put it in the oven at 200 degrees for 30 minutes and it will help dry the dry that really hard um, and it'll allow you to just reassemble. I have no patience. And when I'm painting, it's really hard not to just go ahead and assemble. I do the, it's worse when I have stencils because I got to take the stencils off while it's still hot or it's still slightly damp. And I'm like, oh gosh, you know, whatever. But be patient. Spray paint takes a while to cure. As long as it's dry to the touch, put it in the oven on a piece of, uh, you know, on a cookie sheet with, uh, with tin foil and bake it 200 degrees, 30 minutes. It will give you a much, much better final product and allow you to have a more finished product when you're done. Again, I hope this helps. Uh, if it did, please leave some comments. I love conversation. I love to help answer questions if I can. Give me a like, subscribe, share this with your friends. Unfortunately, a lot of the goat gun stuff doesn't get monetized because, you know, YouTube doesn't like anything firearm related. And gosh knows, I don't want you to get hurt with one of these. So um, any subscribers, I have other things that are monetized. I usually will have affiliate links for Amazon for tools and things that I use. Um, all that stuff helps, man. I just keep trying to bring content. Thanks so much. I'll see you on the flip side. Yeah.